Hello everybody, uh, thank you for tuning in to Bones Collector and today we're going to talk about Monasterium which is a brand new game. It's, it's a 2020 game, or 2020 game, but it wasn't available here in the U.S. till recently and even now it's pretty difficult to get your hands on it. I didn't on, get I it from the U.S., I got it from yeah. Canada. We saw it uh, played in some videos and then um, decided that this would be a game we would really really like and picked it up through some awkward channels that aren't <laughs> normal but uh, we ended up getting a copy and the game is designed by um, Arvo D. Fuehler, and sounds like a German board game designer to me, and the game is manufactured, made, and, and everything in Germany. And I don't know if this is his first game or not. Uh, I should have looked that up before we did the video. Um, go ahead and show him back of the box, too. Right? In the EU. Okay. Two to four players, 90 minutes, 12 and up. Back of the box, doesn't it? It's got a lot of writing on it. In Germany and, and a lot of it's not in... Yes. <laughs> a lot of it's not in uh, English. It's a terrific uh, Euro-style dice game and in this game the main mechanism are rolling dice and once you roll these dice you're going to place them you're going to place it on the board uh, in the areas designated for whatever specific value that die happens to be and once you roll your dice you can choose what which ones you want to play that particular turn so in other words uh, in this dice tray I've rolled two twos two fives a four and a six now, I can choose which ones I want to play. If I pick two, I have to play all the twos that I rolled. If I pick five, I have to play all the fives that I rolled, and so on. Now, maybe I don't want uh, a certain actions to be available for my opponent, or maybe there's certain actions I want to make available for myself. So that's going to go into what dice you select while you're rolling them. You also have the opportunity to re-roll uh, re one time during that particular turn. Yeah, or was it a round? Turn. Is it a turn? You have to flip it over turn, or? Yes, at the end of the turn, you turn it back over. Okay. Pretty sure. Or, yeah, it might be just one round. I, I can't remember. But you have the opportunity to re-roll. So, and it doesn't come into play very often, because you'll, you'll find uh, dice and figure out your strategy for when you're placing those. Then you also have one die that is your specific color. You have the, um, that in your dice pool at the beginning of the game, and you have the ability to earn more dice, which is kind of difficult to do uh, as you get down the path here between the monasteries. There's five monasteries on the board. You're simply going to be placing novices off your player mat, which you have 24, or, yeah, 24 of them, and place them on the board depending on what you've spent as far as resources, and you have... Uh, one, two, three, four different choices when you're building to place a novice. So it gets pretty complex. This game is pretty complex. Yes, it is. And um, lots of rules. Yeah, we've played it six times now. <laughs> so uh, Here's it's a player board. You can kind of see a little better what he's talking about. Where the dice, you choose a dice, and then there's your actions down the sides. And then you have a, a a window you're building on. On your player mat, also it hooks onto like a puzzle piece on the, on the side of your player board, and you're going to be placing monastery windows that you earn during the game on there to to gain some more resources and some points. So it's real important to do that if you can. I mean, it's part of uh, part of the strategy that you're going to have to weave into your game because there's so many ways to play this game. You also have four in-game goal cards that you'll be trying to achieve, and you have two end game goal cards that you'll be trying to achieve and work on. And and that's probably how you win the game. She she wins this game a lot and I think she completes those goals better than I do. But uh, it's something that you have to, it just adds to the depth of the game and you have to pay attention to them. They're kind of, I'm going to say this, the, the, the iconography is just a difficult, a little bit difficult to see and uh, to understand um, because it has placement areas on the cards and you have to know what it means and after uh, quite a few plays, you can you get it down pretty good. Um, but even now, it's just something that I, I, it's I don't know. It's visually my, confusing. Yeah, it, confusing. I, it's just something that doesn't really connect in my brain very well. But that doesn't stop the game from being terrific. It is terrific, and you have some help on the board. It has tells you where you place when you place uh, certain novices, what you get as far as a benefit. So that, that's very helpful, and it has an end-game scoring card that you have to think about also, of how you score points. You score points for the most novices in chapels, uh, the most novices in cloisters, and the most novices, or excuse me, sometimes 
Uh, you get well. The you get benefits novices in the monastery. Yeah, in the monastery. So there's three ways you can place novices in the monasteries. There's the chapel, secular uh, rooms, and then the cloisters. And there's certain ways you have to do that in order to score points. I'm not going to get into that. Uh, it, it get, I can get long-winded doing that. <laughs> but um, so you have this card, and if once you, the game ends, you go down that card, and it shows every line shows you how to score uh, each individual thing in this game. So that's very helpful to have that aid. There are, however, some rules that are not anywhere on the board that you just have to remember. And one of them is when you're placing dice out here on the board, if I've got three fives and one of them happens to be my yellow dice, my player dice, there's three fives in that value section, I have to take that yellow dice first. Um, you can take up to three dice, and in this case, I'd take all three. But uh, in one through five, you can take all three dice. The sixes are wild, and you can only take one of those at a time. So if there's three, four fives. Yes. If there's four you fives there. You cannot take those you and have leave to, yours behind. You have to take your die. Yeah. So you can the, you take max three. You have to take your die. So that gives you three out of the four dice they're showing. You can take two of the neutral ones uh, with you. So and you'd leave one behind. And you might be able to get that the next turn if eyes are what you're after if you're trying to move down this path. So that's how the dice mechanic works. And so there's a little bit of strategy just rolling and placing the dice. Because you have to remember what you're trying to do and what dice are going to trigger the actions you need to get that done. So you have there's some thought process that goes into placing dice. It's just not roll and place. The, the dice represent actions, so you want... Those actions, or maybe your opponent, you know, is uh, seething for something in particular, and you want to keep those dice values away from them. So that's a pretty cool part of the game. Right off the bat, you're doing that. The game is very short. It's only three rounds. It's over way before you know it. Yeah, it's, it's really short. So you really have to accomplish a lot. I've tried to play this game different ways, and uh, wasn't very successful winning when I'm doing that, but I just wanted to get a feel for it. But the best success I had was using the primary uh, scoring card as my focus and that's getting novices out as many as possible in these monasteries uh, having as many novices in chapels and scoring points on the multiples because you get there's a point scoring system where you uh, multiply the novices in the chapel yeah. times the novices in the cloister and that's a very good way to score points. And so you double it. Yeah so it's hard to ignore that um, and, and try to do something else. The times I did win this yeah. game, I just concentrated you solely. Up the chapels, yeah, the cloisters. Just, just getting novices out and getting uh, as many points as you can doing that in as many monasteries as possible. There's another side of the board. Is there more monasteries yeah. on the other side? No, the same number of monasteries, but there's more spaces in the cloister and the chapels. There's there's room for more people. So it's it's a higher player count. It's for the other side, right? Yes. We've only played it at two. Yeah. So we can only speak about how this game works at two, and it's a magnificent again, it's magnificent game design. Um, geez, I mean it's it's in my top ten of the year for sure. Uh, for, and and it's a 2020 game, but I'm going to count it as a 2021 yeah. because most people aren't going to get this game. It's a Euro style game. It's kind of dry. If you don't like that kind of thing, you probably won't like this game. I love dry Euro games. I mean, you know, Princess of Florence, Navigador, um, all the Stefan Feld's games. If you like that kind of thing, this this game will be right up your alley. Well, and it's still not out in the United States, yeah. so it would definitely be counted for 2021. Yeah, what, did we, what was the other place we got? We got it, it from Board Game Bliss in Canada. Board, board Game Bliss in, in Canada, and we've got, used them before. Got several games that we yeah. can't get in the yeah. United States. Usually I can get them from, that costs a little more, but... Sometimes it's worth it. There's a lot in this box. I'm going to tell you that right now. I mean, it's a pretty heavy box. You've got 24 novices for four different players, and then the the avatar you're going to be moving down the path between the monasteries is a little, I think, a donkey in a cart. It's called a messenger, messenger. but it looks like a donkey pulling a cart. Yeah. yeah, and you get some benefits on the path as you go, and you have to be in certain points of the path in order to have access to place your novices, and you can see paths leading to the There's monasteries. No and once you get a certain point, you w you won't be able to go back and place novices in those monasteries unless you go complete the path, and which you can wrap around and start again uh, in going up the path. But man, to try to do that in three rounds is pretty tricky, and um, and you end up um, maybe not accomplishing what you wanted to start it out to do. Well, so. even though you're down here, so you can't get to this. You have a novice in the chapel, so you are allowed to place them. 
in these two areas without the messenger being present. Oh. Well, I'm on your player map yeah, with these. Okay. Uh, you have, whoops, these windows at the top, and that's going to designate what action you take at the start of the game. And as you unlock and put somebody in cloisters, you flip these over, and every time you use that action, you get a point. So you've got these little windows that you've got to flip over on these boards, and uh, and that works okay. It works okay. They've got little slots where your thumb fits down in. You can uh, flip these out and turn them over. Um, that's pretty works pretty well. And on as you can see, there's quite a few alternative actions that you can take once you place all the novices. Of course, you're not going to be able to place them all. And no. I don't know, I will, half maybe. Well, yeah. one of them, 12, is a bonus card if you can yeah. get 12 out there. And yeah. I think we did that once, got 12 on the board. So you have to choose carefully on uh, what actions you want to take for what dice values. And most of the time, I just try to unlock uh, some on <laughs> each one, maybe two on each of the uh, five. That would be 10 novices. And then you at least have some options when you go to that dice value. Well. The novices that are sitting here, once you take all the novices off a row, you place this one for free. Yep. So that would be a way to get an extra one out a little quicker. Yep. I've done that several times. Yeah, and, done. and then turning these over to get a point every time you play those dice, that's pretty important. I mean, I, the, the times I did win this game, I had all these unlocked. And every time I used any action, any, yeah. any dice, I got points for that. One point for every dice of that value I use on that action space. So that's something to think about too. And it's almost, you almost don't want to abandon that because it works so well. But uh, I tried to do different things just to feel the game out a little bit. And I, I don't know if I w just wasn't good at it or, or, or I was, well, somehow it didn't come together for me. I should have just stuck with my uh, <laughs> usual and... Uh, Putting all the maples on the board, all yep. the novices. Putting all the novices on the board and flipping over these uh, windows to get points. And collecting resources. Yep. So, yeah, you get resources. points. For resources are worth points in the, the game. This so is a first player marker. It's a chalice that you put together, a cardboard chalice, nothing fancy. And the round marker is an hourglass. Mm -hmm. And it's not fancy, just, you know, slight, uh, bind them together like you do with. Uh, Posing slots. Keep track of that three rounds. Yep, and yeah. I mean, there's just a lot to think about in this game. And again, you can approach it so many different ways that uh, it kind of, it can hurt your head a little bit, this game. Um, so there's so many different ways you can try to score points. But it's not fun to play the game the same way every time. Because I don't know. I, I just don't like doing it. I like to feel it out a little bit and see what kind of uh, legs it has and, <laughs> and see if you can win doing crazy stuff. And so I tried to do some different things in this game because there, again, are so many different avenues to score points that you can take just to see if they work. I mean, you can bust your butt down this path and get your free, get one of your, unlock one of your dies and then do it again. If you, I don't know, we've never gotten two. I, I think, think I got did, two in one game, but I lost the game yeah. because I spent so much time running down the path to get the dice, I didn't do anything else. So you have to, we've tried different things. Yeah. Yes, that didn't work. So, I mean, you, and as soon as you earn one of your uh, extra dice, you roll it immediately and place it so you can use it that, that turn. Yeah. And that's pretty cool. So it, it gives you an extra dice. Uh, yeah, there's, it's tempting. But the game is so short here yeah. that you have to be able to weave the other things into getting that extra die. Oh, man, it's tough. I mean, there's markers if you reach over 100 points, but I don't... <laughs> I don't know how you get to 100 points. Yeah, you, I don't know. <laughs> but the game is very deep. Deep and wide. It's deep and wide. But the rule book is very good. Yeah. It, it explains it very clearly. But wow. Yeah. It's a, man, it's a top 10 game for sure for 21 for me. Um, it could very well be the best game of the year for me. I mean, I love... It's up there. This these, is good. Yeah, these types of Euro games. And, um, it's a lot good to think about. Yeah, it's fantastic. Like I say, we had to play it two times just to figure out yeah. what we were doing. And then the uh, third, fourth, and fifth, and sixth time, we got to have some fun with it. And Because we missed some of those little rules. That's why yeah. I went through and made a list of all the little rules. Because we did miss a few the first two times we missed a couple rules. Uh, you're going to love this game, and it's a must. This bo the board is not large. It doesn't eat your table, which I, you know, I'm, what can I say? I love that. And it's a small table presence, and you have a, a busy, busy player mat with all those novices on there. Now, I will make one. 
observation and complaint that I have about this game, and it's it's not going to stop me from loving it's it. It's nitpicky, but it's a big complaint. Yeah. All these novices <laughs> are on deal. your player board. This isn't a double layer player board, so in the six games we played, at least three times, we accidentally hit this with our arm, and those novices scoot, and you have no idea which where they were. Yeah, where they were, what you've unlocked, and. And that's a little we bit aggravating. We were aggravated. hitting them with dice. That's why yeah. we had to get dice trays. Because we were rolling dice and they would hit them and move. And you're like, oh, where uh, was what? the hat? Yeah. So that is, that's a little bit of an issue. I don't know if they can make some plexiglass overlays for this. And uh, it would help. But that, that, was pretty, that was pretty hard to deal with. That was the only thing, the only complaint I had about the game. About the whole game, is yeah. You just, it's just impossible to not, when I lean, I hit them and move them and... Yeah. You have to really be careful. And our cat jumped up here once and walked across yeah. them. And <laughs> the cat, the cat made a big mess one time. Yes. But but that's it doesn't stop this game no. from being an amazing board game design, folks. I'm telling you, this is one of the best of the year, if not the best, and it certainly is an <laughs> excellent Euro game that uh, that has oh my gosh so much replayability. That and again we we haven't put it away since we got it. No. We've been playing it and playing it. It's been out for like it. three days, taking up the table. Yeah, and we're just like, oh, let's play it again tomorrow when I get home just from work. Leave it up, yeah. Let's play it and, and play it again. Because it's again fast. Yeah. It's really fast. I mean, you you roll the dice, put them out, choose them. You do that six times, and you're done. Yeah. So it's it's quick. I mean, we never even. I have one guy in this monastery, or I had two. You had one. There's nobody down there. It's hard to get people everywhere. <laughs> Because it's so hard to get to move and get going. Yeah, but again, it's yeah, it's a terrific game, and and uh, all your uh, novices or your meeples are uh, wood. Again, the messengers are wood. The dice are wood. Nice thick uh, tokens. Tokens nice and thick. Yeah. So are the boards. The yeah. boards are. And then these little cards are like the viceroy the little good. square cards uh, that are very. I mean, the, the iconography that's on them is large enough that you don't have to squint. Yeah. So I don't have a problem with that. It's just learning what the iconography yeah, is and how, again, to read that. Um, I think they did a, as good a job as possible of making that um, understandable. It's just that some people's brains, I think, will have a little bit of trouble going, mm -hmm. what? <laughs> and that's me. I'm just going to forget about I said that. I'm going to forget about those cards <laughs> because I'm just going to blast this and this. <laughs> And I end up doing pretty good things. Because it doesn't bother me too much, but... Yeah, a couple, a couple of times I did them by accident. Use. Yeah. Uh, just doing uh, my taking care of business. And I don't think I've ever completed... You did, though. You, you almost I got all did. the windows. Yeah. And, and no, the one, oh, one time the bonus was for 12 novices and you had 11. Yeah. So, so you were one away. I don't think I've ever completed yeah, one of those end game cards. They're difficult. The end game goals are not easy. They're difficult. But, and they don't give you a lot of points. So... So yeah, what else? So selecting your player dice first is one of the rules you have to remember. And then being able to place novices, I guess, in any monastery where you have someone in the chapel is another one you have to remember. And You have to have someone in a secular building t before you can place in a cloister. And it and has to be adjacent to you. It has to yeah. be adjacent to yourself. I couldn't put these over here. Or that's, he couldn't come in and go there because he's touching me. That's something. And we made a little list of notes that we, yeah. of rules that we have to remember that are not. That we missed the first couple times. Yeah, that are not um, printed anywhere on the board or on your player map. Because you're collecting these windows and that's tricky too. You know what, maybe that is. Is that what that means? You can play, yes. yeah. Yes, that's what that means. Yes. It means you have to have the messenger or a person in the chapel to do these actions. Yeah. That's what that means. Yeah. So, Somebody on Facebook told me that. Yeah. <laughs> so I guess it is here on your player map. It is on the player map. But again, it's, it's, it's the iconography. You've got to figure it out. Well, there's a lot of iconography. What does that mean? You know, And I mean, we played the game twice, and I said, what does that top section on the player map mean? It means something, and that's what it means. Some people say, what was he talking about? That was so easy. Because uh, it was yeah. just, I think it's just the way my brain is wired uh, that it was tough for me. But you figured it out quite quick. Yeah, it, it is difficult. But when you, and these uh, windows, there's five different ones on the board, and they're very pretty, by the way. Oh, yeah, the uh, art's gorgeous. The art's really pretty on the windows. And there's certain placement rules when you place them on your player mat. They have to be placed um, to the leftmost space, and the next one has to be placed adjacent to it, top or, bo top or to the side. Or bottom or whatever, wherever you happen to, to be able to touch it. It always goes in the leftmost space of a row. Yeah, so. But like windows can't touch. No, like windows can't be in the same row or the same column. See, here's well, here a, she is. Here's what we're talking about. Here's, here's Godzilla. 
Gonna knock over all the meeples, aren't you? She, yeah. She lets us alone with our board games unless she wants something. Then she's in our face and jumps up here and is, yeah. So she she knocked the stuff over one time. She Just was, once, but she we was did hungry. it ourselves a couple times. She wanted to eat, so it's not wasn't her fault. Um, we we were starving her. <laughs> yep. Okay. That's Monasterium. I hopefully that's everything. What would you rate it out of ten? Oh gosh, I don't know. I mean, whew, I don't know. It could be a 10. I know. That's what I'm thinking. It could be a 10 for me. Nine I mean, and a half to 10. It would be a 10 if these things didn't slide all over. Yeah. <laughs> right. I got to maybe give it a 9.75 because the meeples are hard to keep in place. I'm telling you, if you get the opportunity to get this game, get it. Uh, you're going to uh, really enjoy this challenge. Uh, it's just wonderful. Just a wonderful game. Wow. And uh, yeah, my hat's off to the designer. It's fantastic. The art is beautiful on the box. The, uh, the theme is implemented well with the ro different rooms of the monasteries you're tr and different requirements to uh, place novices there. And again, the game is quick, three rounds. So yeah, and uh, I mean, there's like so many different ways to score and there's so much going on in this game. It is just an amazing design. Wow, my hat's off to that guy. It's just terrific. That's Monasterium. 2000, we're going to call it 2021 here in the U.S. Came out in 2020 in Germany. But uh, yeah, Arvo D. Fuhler. Hey, I salute you, young man. <laughs> he has to be younger than me. Okay, that's it for Monasterium. Please, please get to your telephone or wherever, your computer, and give us a thumbs up. Give us a like. That moves this video up. Uh, we don't, we're, not very often do we get a game as early as some of the big boys so this would help us out for you to give us a like and a thumbs up and then please subscribe and we love every one of you and please keep on board gaming it's the best hobby on the planet we'll see you next time on the bones collector bye bye bye